Hey Ephesus, happy Sabbath, good morning. We are getting right into our message today, week six of our new series, uh, newish series, The Churches. And it has been amazing. We've been looking in the book of Revelation to see God's messages to the seven churches of Revelation and looking in those messages in each and every one of them to see what God is speaking to us today. I have been so ministered to and so poured into, and I hope the same can be said for you. We're gonna hop into this new portion of our series. And today we're talking from the standpoint of the church in Sardis. I want you guys to join me in Revelation chapter three, and we're going to root around unpack this passage and let's see what God is saying. I want to read just one verse to you guys and then we'll work through the rest of the passage together. So join me, Rev chapter 3 verse 1, here we go. The Bible says, to the angel of the church in Sardis write, he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this, I know your deeds, that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. For a few minutes, we're gonna talk through the church of Sardis. Father, I'm asking that you would move in this space. God, touch each and every one of us. Give to us the fullness of your spirit. Allow us to know truly that you care. And I ask that you would speak clearly, crystal clear, that we might be able to understand you today, that we might know who you are and who you desire for us to be in you. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity to meet with you and each other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sardis, Sardis. I hope you're listening this morning, Sardis. This word is for you. So we know that uh, God has been starting out every single one of these messages with a specific description of who he is. Uh, and what it has served to do is to inform us of the nature through, by which he's speaking to us and the attributes or characteristics that he's embodying at this specific time as it relates to the church to whom he is speaking. And this week, like we've said so many times already today, he's talking to the church in Sardis and he opens his message telling them that this is written to the angel in the church of Sardis. And here's his description. The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars in his hand says this. Now, we have been privy to understand what is going on. We know that the uh, the seven stars are the angels of the churches, of the seven spirits. We, we understand what's going on here in the passage. So the Bible, watch, watch this. He wants you to understand from jump that he's speaking to you from the standpoint of one who is holding all of our, um, uh, all of us in his hand, all of our messengers, all those who he has established and put in front of the church. Don't miss this, y'all. Um, typically, he writes to the angel through the angels, a message. But from the way he's starting this particular passage, um, he's not only writing through the angel, but he's writing to the angels. Watch what's going on. He says, to the angel of the church of Sardis, and here's his description. He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars says this. He is informing the leaders in Sardis, that he is aware of who they are, that he is holding them, that he is keeping them, and that the power that they're able to exhibit is exhibited through him. Watch this now. He says, I know your deeds, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. My God, my God, don't miss this. I know your deeds, so I'm aware, right? I know your deeds, and I know that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. I love this message because Jesus is speaking both to the myth and to the reality. He starts out by saying, Sardis, I know your deeds. I know you. He says, I know you have a name. 
I know you have a legacy. I know you have a history. I know that there are stories that can be told about you from decades and decades and decades. I know who you are, Sardis. And it seems as if, watch this now, uh, that Sardis has a reputation that they're continuing to live on even though that reputation no longer exists today. I know your name. I know you have a name, Sardis. And then he says, I know that you are alive. So watch this now. He's speaking to Sardis and he's telling them that he knows who they are. He's well aware of who they are, but he also knows who they used to be. He knows what they stand or stood on. He knows the heights that they used to ride on. He understands how things used to be and how in their own sight, they're still on the high places. He says, I know that you are alive, but he says, you are dead. Jesus now is bringing reality into the situation. While you might see and perceive yourself, Sardis, as a thriving church, while you might see yourself as a living, breathing, growing, functioning entity, while you might see yourself in health and hope and happiness, when I look at you, the truth of the matter is what you see reflected back at you in the mirror is not actually there. Sardis has a unfortunate habit of looking at their past as if it's their present. Sardis has a problem and Sardis is, try, is attempting to continue to live on the legacy that they've established. They have convinced themselves that they are alive. They have convinced themselves that they're functioning. They've convinced themselves that everything is all good. They've convinced themselves of this. But Jesus steps into the situation to inform them in case you don't know. You are not alive. You are in fact dead. Gone are the days of glory. Gone are the stories that we used to tell. Gone are the moments uh, that, that have fled from you. Gone are the, are the times when you existed in a certain state. Gone is that time you are no longer alive, Sardis. You're dead. That's what he says to them. So he continues now and says, wake up. Verse 2, and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die. For I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of my God. I love this, y'all. I love this. I love this. I love this. When he speaks to Sardis, he begins by informing them that he's well aware of who they are. He knows their legacy. He knows their history. He also knows the fact that they are still living on the past. They perceive themselves to be alive, but in fact, they are dead. And then he utters a warning. He says, wake up and strengthen the things that remain. Oh, don't miss this. Uh, by nature, uh, by stating that there, there are things that remain that need to be strengthened, what he is speaking to is that atrophy has robbed us of some of what we should have. There are some things that we will wake up or that we should wake up removed from. My God. There's some things that, that as we wake up, we will have lost out on. We will have missed out on. I wish somebody could stay with me in this place. Uh, oftentimes when a body is at rest for a long period of time, you find that the muscles begin to atrophy and uh, uh, as things begin to shut down, things begin to fall away. And what God is saying to Sardis in this text is that he is asking them, he is pleading with them to get up before everything that they were given is wasted away. Get up and strengthen the things that have not yet decayed. Get up and strengthen that which has not yet fled you. Get up before you lose it all. 
He is informing them that some things they will they may never reclaim again. However, there are some things that they still have in them that it's not too late to strengthen. I I, 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 I don't know uh, if somebody here can resonate with me. I don't know if somebody can speak to the times uh, that have been spent in one space, wasting the gifts that God has given us in another. I don't know if somebody can relate. Uh, uh, the, the missing out on an opportunity because of an unwillingness or an inability to act in the moment that was necessary. Uh, and, and God is saying here to the church the same thing. The there was something that you had. There were some things that you possessed. And there were some things that needed to be done with those gifts, those skills, those talents, that spirit, that ability. Those things which should have been done did not get done because you... Instead of operating in the place that I had you, were living on the memory of yesteryear. You were trapped in the past so that you couldn't participate in your present and you have put in jeopardy your future. Get up! And strengthen that which is left. That which has not fallen away yet. He says, I have not found, no, oh, I love this thing. The opportunity that we have to get up, the opportunity that we have to strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die. Don't miss the text says, the text seems to allude to the fact that if we remained sleeping for longer, if we remained dead for any longer, even those few things that remain, they too would also die away. But he says we can get up and strengthen those things because he has not yet found our deeds completed in the sight of our God, don't miss this thing. He is saying that the opportunity that we have to, 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 to revitalize ourselves, to, to resurrect ourselves, to rejuvenate ourselves, to, to strengthen that which remains, is an opportunity that is founded on the grace of God. He says, listen, I see your stuff, but you haven't done enough yet that you've removed yourself from me. You haven't done enough yet that my grace can't cover you. You haven't gone too far that you're not salvageable. I wish somebody could remember the one who is talking to us is the one who walked into a room with people who were mourning over a sleeping Lazarus. I said sleeping and not dead because the one who was in the room with them, crying with them, holding on to them, announced himself as both the resurrection and the light. And if Jesus Christ is in the midst, then resurrection is there waiting for you. I wish somebody could understand that he is informing us that it is not possible for us to be outside of the boundaries, the confines of his grace. And if we would just hear his voice and not harden our heart and wake up, we have the opportunity to strengthen that which is still here. We haven't lost all of our young people. Get up and strengthen that which is still here. We haven't depleted our legacy. Get up and strengthen that which is still here. Here, we haven't sullied our name yet. Get up and strengthen that which is still here. The reputation can still be salvaged. Our young people can still be called back. We can still get rid of the demons of political arguments and fractures and schisms and clubs in our church. We can get up and strengthen what remains. We can get up and build on that which has not yet decayed. We can get Get up. Sardis, he says, you haven't yet completed your deeds in the sight of my God. 
So remember what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. Therefore, he says, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief in the night and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Listen, there's some things that I gave you, some things I spoke over you, some things I proclaimed in your life. So watch this thing. Instead of uh, 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 regarding the glory of your legacy, you should instead look over the story of your legacy. That is so corny. I'm going to say it again. Instead of regarding the glory of your legacy, you need to look back and regard the story of your legacy because you get so focused on the fact that you were able to stand uh, before a conquered Jericho that you miss the fact that God opened up the Jordan so you could walk through it. You miss the fact that you didn't raise near one sword, one stone, one bat, one stone stick, one spare, one club, but that you walked around that thing in silence until God said shout, and when you shouted, the Spirit of God moved so much that the walls came tumbling down. You need to remember the story of your legacy, that you would not be standing where you're standing today if not for the God who went before you as pillar of fire by night and cloud by day, if not for the fact, like Psalm 22 says, that when the sea blew open that Israel crossed the Red Sea in our God's footsteps. I wish somebody would remember that you would not be able to be here if not for what he has spoken to you, if not for what he has done in your life, if not for the things that he has given to you. So he says, remember what you have received and heard and keep it and repent. And we know this thing when he says repent. What the text is referring to is that the direction that we are going in is the wrong direction. And God desires that we would turn around. He says, remember what I've given to you. Hold that thing tight and turn back to me. Woo! Feel like preaching. If you don't, he says, if you don't wake up, I'm coming. And I'm coming like a thief. You will not know what hour I will come to you. Mm. So watch this thing. This, this awakening needs to happen and it needs to happen now. You're, 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 you're decaying. You're falling apart. You're, 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 the longer you stay sleeping, the, the less and less and less you will wake up with. But not only are you losing out on things, but I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And if you miss me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he says, huh. there are a few people, however, in Sardis who have not soiled their garden. <laughs> Yo, I love this thing. And they will walk with me in white. Mm -hmm. So he takes a pause in this address of the church to make something clear. Within the church, there's a minority. Don't, don't, don't do that. Uh, there are a few who have not died, who have not fallen asleep, who, who, who maintained fervor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Text says they walk with him. Mm -hmm. Watch what he says. Uh, uh, he doesn't take time <laughs> to pat them on the back. Instead, what he does is he offers an invitation to those who are dead to walk with those who are living. Ooh, I love this. He says, he who overcomes will thus, or will in like fashion, be clothed in white garments. Listen, you, you're soiled. You're, 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 I wish somebody could, could realize what happens when you're in the grave. Your, your garments are no longer clean. You, you are contaminated. You are unclean. But God says, look, if you can overcome, if you can get up. 
if you can strengthen those things that remain, if you can begin to, 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 to toil and, and seek my face and come back to life, watch this thing. He says, if you overcome, you will thus be clothed in white garments. Don't miss what he's saying. The first thing that is being implied in this passage of scripture is that the garments that you will be provided with are not garments that you can get or put on on your own. He says, not that you will clothe yourself in white garments, but rather he says you will be clothed. This is a passive uh, 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 article. What he's saying here is that clothing will be placed upon you. God himself is going to gird you. God himself is going to dress you. If you can get up and you can move toward him, God will put on you that which he desires to put on you. The second thing that's implied in this passage, in this portion of the passage, is that those who are currently dressed in white did not dress themselves. God is saying, I'm gathering for myself a body of people who look like me because they allow me to clothe them in my righteousness. Who look like me because they allow me to wash them in my blood. Who look like me because they desire to walk in the places where I walk. God says, if you overcome, I will thus, I will likewise clothe you uh -huh, in white garment. Now, 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 he says, and I will not erase erase his name from the book of life and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. This always gets me excited. Let me calm myself down as I prepare to close. I feel like preaching. Uh, 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 oftentimes, uh, we as Christians struggle with the notion of our salvation. Uh, Sometimes you can walk into churches in America and ask the question, how many of you are saved? And you see the hands go up with trepidation sp uh, spattered across the room because we wrestle with the notion of salvation. Let me help somebody right now. Uh, the, the Bible says here, I wish someone got this. The Bible says here, uh, I, will, I, will I will not erase his name from the book of life. Y'all ain't with me yet. Hold on one second. I'm coming. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Don't move, don't move, don't move. See, this is a box of tissue. And, and in this box of tissue, there is tissue. That's why it's a box of tissue. Now, now I want you to see this. Um, I'm going to remove a piece of tissue from the box of tissue. Now, you may not know what I'm doing, but stay with me, you will. In order for me to remove the tissue from the box of tissue, the tissue had to already be in the box. <laughs> you, you, you can't take something out of that which it's not in. And, and, and the Bible says here uh, that he who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments and I will not erase his name from the book of life. And what we fail to realize is that in order for God to erase your name, in order for God to blot out your name, in order for God to remove your name, your name had to be in the book to begin with. I wish somebody would just pause and celebrate right now with me for just about five seconds that my name is written in the book of life, that my name has been inscribed in the book of life that God is able to look and recognize me among those who he has called. He says, if you overcome, I will not erase your name from the book of life. Watch this now. That means I am in relationship with God and my desire to wake up from my dead state is what will keep me in relationship with him. How, how can I unclean be in right relationship with God? My Bible says that while we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. My Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might be called the righteousness of God. So like hooping. My Bible says that God decided that he would come down and wrap our injured flesh around him that he might become that which we need that we might be saved in him. My Bible says that we were dead in our trespasses and in our sins and in us operate the same spirit that's currently at work in the sons of disobedience but God being rich in mercy which he has loved on us raised us to life with Jesus Christ my Bible says that we have been saved by grace through faith my Bible lets me know that God did not account where I was when he found me he was simply thinking about where he would take me and the Bible says that the moment I accepted him my name is written in the book God desires Jesus desires to keep your name in the book and because he desires to keep your name in the book because he desires to clothe you in white because he desires to walk with you he is begging you to wake up get up from the dead Sardis he says, I'll confess your name before my father and before his angels. Watch this thing. Not only will I not remove your name from the book, but I will speak as a witness to your name being there validly. I'll confess your name before my father. No, no, this one. This one is mine. Mm, this is good. This is good. Uh, uh, but, 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 but. Uh, the, the, the doubt and the, the negative self-talk that's coming out of me right now. No, no, never mind. This one is mine. Dad, dad, dad don't, don't look at them based on what they uh, would, would, would be covered in. Instead, look at them and see my blood. That one belongs to me. I wish I was in a church right now and somebody would celebrate the fact that Jesus is ready to confess my name before the Father. Jesus is ready to confess my name before the angels. The Bible says that he desires that I would be with him him and that he would be with me if only I would wake up Sardis there's some things you've lost already some things that have fallen away in your sleep get up you've been dead too long strengthen that which remains close the passage as he closes all of the messages he says he who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And tonight, uh, this morning, I, I want you all to, to, to hear this. God is talking. Ephesus, he's speaking. There's some Sardis in us. There is some, there is some dead in us, corporately and individually. Y'all don't miss this thing. There, there, there's a part of you that is holding on to the glory days of the past that prevents you from seeing the grave that you currently are right now. Get up. At one point you were vibrant, thriving, full of life and energy. Get up. There's much that has been lost, but you have the opportunity to strengthen that which remains. God says, if you overcome, I'll clothe you in white. You'll walk with me. Your name will be secured in this here book. And I will shout your name before my father. Is anyone here today who's been feeling like Sardis? Who's been looking over yesteryear and, and, and re regaling themselves with the glory of the legacy? But it's realized that today God has, has called you to, in spite of the story and the legacy, to get up. In light of the story, to get up. Strengthen that which remains. Allow God to do in your present, in your future, more than he has done in your past. He's calling you today. If you're here with me, 
I want you to pray this prayer with me before we close. Father, I thank you. I thank you for being, wit for being willing, God, to traverse into the grave to call me from death. Thank you, God, for finding me in the places where I was unfindable, for saving me in the places where I was unsalvageable, for establishing me in the places where I should not be. I thank you, God, for your promises to me, for your desire to be in relationship with me. God, I glorify your name, and I ask simply this. God, be that which I need. I ask that you would call us to life, God. Call clearly that we might hear you even beyond the grave, God. Call that we might wake up in you and be strengthened in your spirit. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to abide in you in this capacity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next week, Ephesus, God bless you in grace and peace.